<laughs> and then Michael Bay it. <laughs> Zoom in and out real quick. Uh, don't forget the bold, uh, Red Bull sponsorship. <laughs> Hello! This is going to be a little bit shorter of a video than my other videos, but no less important. This was the first time that my Inplay LARP family were able to hang out with one another physically. Being Florida in the summer, we were worried it was going to storm out of our event because we were on our friend Sarah's porch during it. But it didn't, so that's fantastic. It was just a little bit stormy on the way there, which really slowed down our arrival. And on the way, Nick picked up the food from this restaurant by where he works. I actually really don't know what the name of it is called. There's like no sign. He just like walks into a building that has no sign on it and then walks out with food. It's, I don't understand. And we also picked up our two friends, Giovanni and Artez. Just picked up our friends Giovanni and Artez. Hello. You guys excited? Yes. Yes. It was like a 30 minute drive now. Oh, that's exciting. That <laughs> that's, all, that's really why I came to line. So yeah, yeah, the drive yeah, is yeah, honestly yeah. the most Once important part. Once we get there, we should just leave and we can enjoy the 30 minutes back. 100% agree. Oh yeah, most definitely. Sarah is a wonderful person. She is great at designing. She is great at costuming and creation as well as putting costumes together and she's wonderful at decorating along with being just absolutely a wonderful person. She was the one that decorated the porch into our aesthetic. Our aesthetic is in, like fantasy and Indo-Persian like inspired by more Indian than Persian and she did a fantastic job with it. We had some delicious food there. We had some, Nick, of course Nick brought the chicken Vindaloo, and then she made Sarah. She made some chicken korma and tiki masala, and of course there was like hummus and like some other foods there as well. A really good spread. This was more of an out of play hangout than any in play interaction, just because we wanted to catch up with one another. We did end up having some fun. Of course, Sarah, being great at anything and everything creative, did some henna on some people. The henna looked really good, except for if you smeared it like I did, yeah, mine didn't turn out that great, not because of her, but because of me. I did smear it like all over my sari because I forgot it was on my hand and I felt absolutely terrible because she did such a good job on it. And there was also a lot of like strange escapades, so there was a horsefly, for instance, there was a horsefly that got in in between some hanging fabrics and everybody freaked out. Oh, they freaked out. Which I can't blame them. If they bite, they really hurt. Everyone looked absolutely divine and wonderful. Our family in play um, is headed by uh, Nick's character. He's, he's the leader of our little family. We're not in play, like, actually like, blood-related. Some of them are, but not everybody. We just call each other family because we're close. And really... It's important to us that everybody feels like connected and feels like they have somebody they can talk to out of play because LARPs can be very dangerous, like very, very dangerous. Uh, so it's just important that you always make sure that you have somebody and we wanted to develop that just naturally inside the game, which is I think how all games should do it. Everybody else, I don't really want to get too far into like who they are and like what their characters are um, because I really respect privacy and I always operate off of the default that people do not want their information out there. In the contemporary age of the internet, people do not understand how important privacy is. There's reasons why there are a lot of privacy laws and regulations going into effect like the GDPR in Europe and the CCPA in California, it's just, it's important. And that is especially true at LARP. <laughs> there are a lot of horror stories, so please, please, if you are also um, recording LARP events like I am doing, please respect your fellow players because there are a lot of crazy people out there and when you get into a hobby like LARPing, it just comes out more. I don't know why, I guess they feel like they can because a lot of it's make-believe, but just <laughs> please, please respect people's boundaries, which is why you're not going to see like a lot of people in my videos unless they explicitly tell me it's okay. 
but that is not the case with this group. We are specifically formed to be a safe space for everybody. Um, Nick's character, I can talk about that because I know he's okay with me talking about that. His character name is The Hawk. There's an in-play joke surrounding his character. He's a merchant. And there's like a fake cult in play and it's a little weird, but I understand it's like the, the cult of the coin. Really funny stuff. He um, also is like very diplomatic. Uh, so he's going to be, he'd be found more like speaking and talking to people and making, arranging deals for the people within his group than anything else. But everybody else just looked absolutely wonderful. I'll throw pictures up of them that I know that they're okay with being viewed by the general public. Um, but it was really good just to see everybody and even though there were really no in-play interactions because again this was an out-of-play hangout, I was privileged to have Scarlett tell me about her experience. She doesn't play somebody within our group, but we still obviously love her because she's very connected to people within our group. So it was great hearing her story and I'll let her tell you about her experiences um, at a recent LARP event. Oh, um, for the, for the your reporter. Uh, like that was it. No, I well, it wasn't at this point. This is what oh, gave me oh, the idea. Yeah. So I stayed up until 6 a.m. on the Friday night, or Saturday morning, if you prefer. And at first, the zombies came out and they were for the low level players. And, you know, I, I was still only doing one normal. And I have three hit points, so everything kills me with one hit, but it's just so much fun. You know, and sneaking up behind you and doing more, doing more damage than that. Um, anyway, great fun. Oh, yeah. um, then they, they go to bed, there's a bit of a lull, and I, I'm still not really jazzed, I haven't go to bed yet, I stay up. So instead, I do, uh, for a bit longer, just gonna sit around and enjoy the night air. And all of a sudden I hear more combat, and it's these shades. <laughs> these huge ghosts, these portals open, ghostly things. I mean, you can come by real quick. Oh, yeah, we can edit it. I'm like, no. No, you, you can wait. It's like, you cannot pass. <laughs> Do not stall production, Giovanni. <laughs> that lighting is actually working really well. That's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, these shots come out. Think Lord Monstros, Shadow Monstros. Unfortunately, the background noise became very loud at this point between the vehicles and everybody talking in the background, so I thought I would just summarize what she's saying. So she's, she's saying that all these weird creatures are coming out of these portals, and people are talking about, oh, going through portals, and going on an adventure, bringing back artifacts, and how the people who were portraying the portals were like, ah, you want to jump through? And she was like, ah, nah, nah, no, I don't. And they were having a blast um, exploring and investigating and seeing all of these creatures, like wispy creatures, uh, dealing with this portal, and she was just very intrigued by it. And here I'm kind of just like, what do you mean they want to go through the portals again? Because at our game there was this whole adventure with like a place called Lake Town where people were just jumping through portals and dying. And she's like, I don't know. They just want to do it. Like she's like, I don't. It's my first experience at this LARP. I have no idea what's going on, but I just thought it was all interesting and cool. And here I am is what she's saying. Uh, feeling like I'm inside World of Warcraft and like that's how she was making things make sense in her mind and it was just so cool for her to experience. But she came back later from that night and she decided to just make a uh, report in the newspaper. There's an in-play newspaper that people can write in and explain their experience and she's saying that she has no lores, she has no mechanical lores to actually know what's going on so she's just writing things down and sending them off to the paper from what she's being told in play and that's basically how she becomes a reporter. Whether or not the information is true, she says, I don't know, but this is everything that I'm hearing, so this is everything that I'm writing down, and that is how I became a reporter. It was a really great time, though. We discussed where we wanted our future to go. We discussed where our characters. We also discussed like a little bit more like history on the race as a whole, and <laughs> we had so much fun. We ended up staying up way too late like i know that nick giovanni or taz and i did not intend to leave like around midnight it was like 11 30 
um, maybe it was 11, 10, I don't know, everything was a blur last night. But it was just, we were having too much fun. I'm going to be taking a break from this channel for a couple weeks because when you see this video, I will be a week into my two-week backpacking trip. So if you want to see my progress on that as my mom and I prepare for longer through hikes, you can check out my mom's channel, Always Adventure On, which will be at the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to one day, to all my friends out there, take more pictures of you and record you having fun and being your best self. So if you're interested, please let me know. I would love to record your beautiful selves. Thanks! <laughs>